another video on the E55. I hope you guys liked the intro. One of my friends actually helped me with that. Now this video is going to be about the AEM FIC8 install. The reason I decided to go with an AEM FIC is because I considered a few different options. Getting the stock ECU reprogrammed or getting a standalone ECU or going with this one. And the reason I chose this is because it's a, it's a relatively simple option and it still gives me the ability to change the program while I'm at the track. Now I'm still not done with tuning everything, I still have to go to the track and make sure everything's working normally. So I'll leave the tuning part for the next video, but this video is going to cover the installation and how to get your car running on an FIC. So just to tell you a bit about the AEM FIC, it's exactly like the name suggests, it's a fuel and ignition controller. And this is known as a secondary EC or a piggyback ECU. Because what it does is it doesn't exactly control the ignition map or fuel map on its own. It just takes the injector values that are going out from your factory ECU and it manipulates them according to whatever you program into it. So it gives you the ability to add fuel or reduce fuel at certain RPMs and at certain engine loads. And the same way with the ignition, it actually gives you the ability to retard the ignition at certain engine loads and engine RPMs. So it basically gives you the ability to change your fuel and ignition map in order to run more boost safely. And talking about what sensors you'll need to connect to the AEM FIC to get it working, you'll need to connect the crankshaft position sensor and the camshaft position sensor to the FIC. You need to intercept these circuits because what the FIC does is it actually manipulates the values from these sensors and it sends a different value to the ECU so that it can actually change the ignition map. Your ECU actually uses the value from the crankshaft position sensor to determine when to fire the spark plug. So by changing these values it can give you the ability to basically change the ignition map. The other circuit that you need to intercept is the circuit for your injectors. This is so that the FIC can basically change the pulse widths that are going to the injector. So it gives you the ability to basically increase fuel or decrease fuel at certain RPMs and at certain engine loads. There's also an internal map sensor inside the FIC, so you need to connect the vacuum line from that to your manifold. And by connecting just these circuits, you can actually get the FIC working, so you can actually start your car. Now some additional sensors that you might need to connect, which entirely depends on your car, um, is the mass airflow sensor because the reason why you might need to connect that is because sometimes when the ECU detects that you're running too much airflow in your car it might retard an awful lot of ignition or it might cut power completely so you might need to change the values from your mass airflow sensor going to your stock ECU in order to fool it into thinking that you're not running any extra boost the same way you might also need to tap into the circuit for your manifold pressure sensor um, to fool the ECU into thinking you're not running any additional boost and you might also need to tap into your O2 sensors, your oxygen sensors, because your engine uses this to actually determine what air fuel ratio you're running, and sometimes it will actually change the air fuel ratio depending on the values of your O2 sensors. So in closed loop mode, it will actually always rely on the O2 sensor and change your air fuel ratios according to that. Now the FIC does actually come with all the instructions and all the wiring diagrams that you'll need to follow on how to connect each sensor and how to um, get the whole thing working. So the first thing you'll need to do, or the first thing I recommend doing when you uh, get the FIC is figure out which wires you actually need to connect because since it's a universal ECU, it's made for many different models. Um, it, comes, it will come with a bunch of wires that you'll never end up using. So just go through the wiring diagrams and see how much you actually need to control on your engine. And once you've separated all the wires that you don't need to use, you can simply just um, take them out of the connector. I'm just using this pin over here, I just insert it into the uh, connector and then that can that helps me remove the pin. But there's actually a special tool for this that you can get. So after spending a bit of time just organizing the wires, I've ended up with all these wires that I don't need. And these wires I still have to remove, all, uh, these ones I'm also not going to be using. But for all the wires that I do need or I think at least I will end up using, I've put it in this heat shrink. The FIC actually did come with this heat shrink so I've just um, put all the wires in this heat shrink to just make it more organized then I'm later going to be connecting all these wires to uh, my car to the wiring harness so once you've sorted all the wires the next step is to find the location of your ECU your engine control unit or sometimes it's even called ECM and for me it was located under this plastic cover in the engine bay but for some other cars it might even be located inside the car and once you remove the cover there's this fuse box on one side and then there's the ECU on the other side and basically these wires coming out of the ECU that are going to the engine, these are all the wires that are going to your different injectors and your sensors and everything. So these are the wires you need to tap into. But before you get into tapping any of these wires, I highly recommend disconnecting the negative terminal on your battery and removing these plugs from your ECU because what happens is when you're cutting so many wires and making so many connections, it is easy to make mistakes. So if you connect the wrong wire to power or do something like that, it's easy to damage your ECU. 
And in fact, even static charge can damage your ECU. So once you have the first connector out, the other two connectors are fairly easy. You just push this tab down, pull this up. This connector comes out. And then you can undo the last connector, which is the same process. And then all the outputs that are going to the engine are on these three connectors. So this connector, this connector, and this one. And these two, I believe, are going to the cabin, so they're not related to the engine. So you don't need to worry about these two connectors. Now, for most cars, you will be able to find the wiring diagram somewhere online, um, where you'll be able to locate which wire actually controls what thing. But the problem for this car is I couldn't find any wiring diagrams online, or w even uh, color codes that tell you which color wire does what. Uh, so I had to trace all these wires myself. So I've already traced the crank position sensor and the cam position sensor. The way I did that was I just looked up the colors of which wires were coming from there. And I was able to trace them back here. But the colors for the injectors are not that simple. They're really weird colors and I can't find them here. So what I'll do is I'll just use my multimeter over here. And I'll use a continuity tester to basically um, put one probe in the injector and then trace it back here to the connector. Because one of these pins would be going to that uh, wire over there. So if I find that pin, then I'll be able to trace the wire and then I'll be able to connect that to my FIC. So now I have the injector rail out because I was changing the injectors to these higher flow injectors. And I thought this was a good time to actually probe all the wires to check which injector wire goes where. So I have this wire connected to one of the terminals of the injector plug over there. And it's connected to my tester. And I'm just uh, going to to my multimeter. And I'm just continuity testing it. So I'll just go in this uh, through each pin one by one and hopefully on one of these pins it should beep. And I already found the pin for that one. It was this pin in the corner. And there you go, it beeps on that. So I know that this pin is connected to that injector and then I can trace the wire from here and then I know it's this wire. For the ones that are harder to get to you can actually disassemble this whole plug, this thing comes out and then you can actually see the color of which wire goes where and um, just trace all those wires. And for the wires that are harder to get to, I didn't show you this process before, but you can actually disassemble this connector to actually locate the wire. Uh, there's just this little tab over here that you pull back with a small screwdriver. And then you can actually pull this connector out. And then once you have the connector out, you just go to the same pin again, which you... So for me it was... Um, it was this pin over here and then you can actually see which wire that's going to so that's obviously going to the yellow wire so I know that my intake air temperature sensor is connected to that yellow wire and then I'll label this one and connect this to the FIC so that's how I'm tracing all my wires so now I have all the wires labeled so all the injectors and all the different sensors I need to connect so next I just need to do the job of cutting each wire and then um, connecting it to the FIC I know it looks like a lot of wires right now but uh, just work your way with each like just work your way with each wire just one by one if you just work one by one it's hard to mess up that way that's why it's easier I'm going to be using heat shrinks to heat shrinks the wire after and I just have a soldering station over here which I'm going to use to solder all the wires together so most of the wires were in these two connectors the bigger two connectors that connect to the ECU over there but only one wire I'm taking from this other connector this is the wire for the ignition now that's going to power the FIC. Now as an example, let me just show you what I'm doing with the wires over here, how I'm making the connections. So right now I'm just making the connection for injector 1. This is basically the diagram I'm following. So fuel injector from ECU, so this is the wire coming from the ECU. So I have to cut the wire from here in the middle. I have to connect the injector in wire coming from the FIC to this point over here. And the injector out wire to the wire that's going to go to the fuel injector. Uh, so I have the two wires over here. Here's the wire for, oh, there's text on one side, okay, so this is injector one out, so that's the wire that's going to go to this side of the wire, which is going to the injector, and injector one in is going to go to this side, which is going to go to the connector, and I'm going to cut it from the middle. Well, I'm going to cut it from the middle first and then make the connections, obviously, but just to explain to you guys, um, that's what I'm going to do. So after that I just cut the wires and then connected them to the wires coming from the FIC. And I like using this method where you just fold the end of the wire into a hook and then you have these two hooks that basically just connect to each other. Um, I like this way because you don't need to hold the wire while you're soldering it. So the wire just stays in place and then you can easily solder it there. And then after that just slide a heat shrink on it and then shrink the heat shrink. 
And once the connection was done and wrapped in heat shrink, this is what it looked like. Okay, so now I've finished all the connections for my injectors. And I think that was really most of the work since I have so many injectors. There's eight injectors since it's a V8 engine. Now I have to connect the rest of the sensors, which is going to be... Um, I'm going to start off with the cam position sensor now, <coughs> which are these yellow wires. So for the cam position sensor and the crank position sensor, just make sure that you know what type of sensor your car uses because there's two different types. There's a Hall effect sensor and then there's a Mac type sensor. And the way to tell is just by looking at the signal. So the a Hall effect sensor will have a square wave like the blue signal on top and a Mac type sensor will have a sine wave, which is the yellow signal at the bottom. These were actually the signals from my crank position sensor and cam position sensor. So the signal on the top is a cam position sensor. The signal at the bottom is a crank position sensor. Notice how the crank position sensor signal repeats twice in one period of the cam position sensor. That's because the crank actually spins two rotations and the cam only spins one rotation in one engine cycle. And here's a closer look at the crank position sensor. This time the blue signal is the crank position sensor and the yellow signal is the crank position sensor signal coming out of the FIC. I thought it was a good idea to look at both these signals and compare. So the FIC doesn't exactly replicate a perfect sine wave. And in this signal also notice the phase shift. You can see that the yellow signal has a slight bit of delay. That's because I programmed the five degrees ignition retard. And you can see that the FIC is trying to get that ignition retard by actually offsetting the whole signal. So the signal is actually sending to the ECU is actually offset by five degrees. So it's basically fooling the ECU into thinking that the crank is at a different position than it actually is. And that's how it really retards your ignition timing. So now I'm done with most of my connections, but I'm still left with all the power connections that are going to power the FIC. I've already connected my signal ground. So signal ground is basically different from ground. Um, you can call it signal ground or sensor ground. Um, it's basically a ground wire that's going to ground all the sensors. So the um, manifold, pressure sensor, the throttle body, and basically any 5-volt sensor that's in the car. It's going to be grounded to disc ground because this is a much cleaner ground. It doesn't have any noise or anything in it. Um, but the other ground is the power ground. The power ground is what will actually power the ECU uh, because this has to control all the injectors and the injectors will draw a lot of power. So it needs a proper ground. That's why it has two ground wires, not just one. And both these wires will do exactly the same thing. You just need to connect them both together. And I'm just going to ground it right here with this nut over here because this is a chassis ground right here. And I have this little tab, I'm just going to crimp this on these two wires and then just um, bolt it over here. That's going to be my ground. And my power, this is the power wire, it's going to go to this red blue wire over here. That's the wire for ignition. So once I'm done with all that, hopefully this thing should turn on and I should be able to start my car. So after I was done with all my wiring, here's what everything looks like. I've just tucked all these wires to the side so I can close the actual cover. And I've taken the wires out from this rubber thing. It had enough space for all these wires to come out. And this is my ground wire. This is the only wire that's outside the box. It's going to this nut over here where I'm taking my power ground from. And I've decided to mount the FIC on the actual cover for the ECU. I'm, I'm going to need to cover all these wires because this isn't fully waterproof. There could be water in this area, which might damage my FIC. So I'll need to be careful with that. But other than that, the good thing is I can close this box properly now, so my ECU and everything is safe. And I think it works fairly well in terms of space, just, um, just having the FIC over here. And this is my vacuum line. The vacuum line I actually didn't show you, I also had to connect this. This actually goes to the surge tank, it's taking the reading from the surge tank. I just connected a T over here. So that vacuum line goes to my boost cages that are inside my car. And this vacuum line now goes to the FIC. I'll need to wire tie this line somewhere too. Right now it's just hanging loose, which is not a good thing. And the USB cable, I've passed it from here to inside the car so I can have my laptop inside my car when I'm changing the values or reading the values from the FIC. But that's pretty much everything as far as the installation goes. And next I have to change the program on it to actually <laughs> make use of it. So after you're done with actually connecting the FIC, you just go on the AEM website and you download the software. And then you have to go on open and you open this base map. Um, it already comes with this base map, but I've already made some changes to it. And then the first thing you need to do is you need to go on setup and calibration. And then you need to enter an RPM value over here. And the first time you start your car, you need to um, hold your RPM at that value and then press auto so that the FIC can detect and calibrate itself to that RPM. 
and then after that you will notice that this button is for the gauges and then after that these gauges should start working normally then you'll also need to um, make the fuel correction if you change your injector size you will need to make the fuel correction you just right click over here you go injector size I've already done this so I'm not uh, gonna do it again but you enter your new injector size and your old injector size and it will basically automatically populate this table and I've already made some changes to it just to make my air fuel mixture a little richer for the higher RPMs but I still need to make more changes to actually fine tune all this and actually look at my air fuel ratios and um, manage them so that they're perfectly fine at higher boost levels and for the ignition map I'm also running a lot of retard on the higher boost values right now but later I'm gonna have to um, decrease this, uh, decrease these values because this is a lot of retard right now um, I'm just running it really safe right now because I haven't tested it and I made sure everything's working fine but anyways let me just show you a quick startup of the car and then go through all these values so let me just start the engine and show you all the values so the load value drops down this is this load is basically coming this value is coming from the pressure sensor that's inside the FIC so it's basically a manifold pressure sensor you can say a manifold absolute pressure sensor and these are my injector duty cycles right now they're just at one and two because the engines at low load if I rev the engine they'll go higher up analog A I'm using this input as my manifold pressure sensor this is the manifold pressure sensor reading that, that the factory manifold has I'm actually changing that so analog out I will actually use this to um, not let my ECU detect that I'm running higher boost levels I'm gonna stop it around 9 psi or something because after that the stock ECU starts retarding timing an awful lot analog B is just an air temperature sensor reading I'm taking from my intake air temperature sensor and that's just to and that's just for safety reasons so in case my intake air temperatures get too high on the track I can do something about it so so far the car seems to be running fine there's no error messages and there's no check engine light um, but I'll still need to adjust the upper levels of the map where the uh, where the boost levels actually go above what the stock ECU is designed to handle I need to fine tune those values because right now I'm just running really safe I'm running really rich and retarding the timing by an awful lot and it's also going to be interesting to see how much boost I can get away with on this setup so yeah that's all to come for the next part um, thanks for watching and I guess you guys will find out whatever happens next